Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Blog. And as you've seen, I haven't had any updates since Christmas, and even that was just like a thank you video. There hasn't been a lot of movie news coming out for the Venom movie this week, and that's probably because either they're being really low-key on their production and their filming, or they, like normal people, would take a couple days off to go spend time with their family and loved ones. So uh, if that's the case, you know, I hope everyone over there is doing well at the Venom movie. And I, yeah, I've been keeping an eye on like Atlanta Filming and Marvelous Realm and other websites to see if anything new would pop up. And unfortunately, nothing did, but I was kind of expecting that. So I apologize for the lack of videos this week. I promise as more movie news comes up, we will cover it definitely. I want to sink my teeth into the Spider-Man animated series. I, You see I have kind of a new setup here. I, this is not final. I'm still working on it. The blue lights, they kind of work for me. They kind of don't. Uh, you guys let me know what you think down below. But these are like original, well not original, but these are cell, you know, cells, uh, animation cells from the Spider-Man animated series from the 90s. And these actually came with comic books. There was a, a series of books uh, for like one or two months leading up to the animated series. So to promote it, they put these little like um, six or eight page like uh, comic books that kind of showed you some concept art of Spider-Man and how excited the team was to work on Spider-Man, bring him to life for the first time in animation in a while, you know, ever since like Spider-Man is Amazing Friends and stuff. And they were really passionate about it and they really pushed it. Marvel Comics really pushed that series. They wanted it to do really well. And what they did was they included these cells in a lot of the comic books. When this uh, animated series was coming out, I was pumped. And from episode one, I was hooked. And they had all these little breadcrumbs they laid throughout the storylines in the first couple ish, uh, episodes of the show, which were fantastic. They had Eddie Brock working at the Daily Bugle, and he was trying to... Um, win J. Jonah Jameson's approval over Peter Parker. So they were kind of like rivals. So they were setting up Eddie pretty early on. And then uh, uh, during a lizard story, Eddie was convinced that, that the lizard was Dr. Kirk Connors, which is true. We know it's true. Uh, but what happened is Spider-Man was able to cure Kirk Connors before the authorities and stuff could get to him. So when they show up, they just see Kirk Connors. And Spider-Man says, yeah, we just defeated the lizard. He's gone, it's dead, and Kirk Connors is alive. He kidnapped Kirk Connors, and it made Eddie Brock look like a liar. And so it, you understand Eddie's frustration a little bit more in the animated show because he actually was telling the truth. He was was telling the truth that Kirk Connors was the, the lizard. And when, when Spider-Man spun it on him and was like, no, I'm going to protect my friend because I don't like Eddie Brock, and also I, I'm worried about uh, Kirk Connors' reputation. He's a brilliant scientist. He has a family. I don't want that to be ruined. By doing that and standing by uh, Kirk Connors, and he was like, oh, he was a victim to this thing he injected himself with, it ruined Eddie Brock's life. So in the cartoon, a completely different take on some of the events of the storyline, but still kind of keeping true to the roots of the story and Eddie's hatred towards uh, Peter Parker and towards Spider-Man. Uh, because at this point, he was already hating Peter, too, at the Bugle because they were rivals. So then they do a three-part storyline called the, you know, like the Venom symbiote, you know, trilogy or whatever. And it was these three great episodes that showed uh, John Jameson, uh, who was J. J. Jonah Jameson's son. He was an astronaut. He goes to the moon and him and his, uh, his fellow astronaut find a rock on the moon. And when they pull it out, this ooze is dripping from it. And they're like, and then the, the you know, the asteroid or the, I think they were on an asteroid or maybe they were on the moon. I can't remember, but things start to shake. So they, uh, the ground starts to shake. So they run over, get on their ship and head back to their shuttle. And then they start heading back towards earth. And they have these different rocks that they found from different areas of the moon and other things they were looking at. And the one that had the ooze on it was called Promethean X. And so on earth, the Kingpin, who was like a major villain in the Spider-Man cartoon, he got wind that Promethean X was on the shuttle. And so him and his partner, Alistair Smythe, uh, they hired the Shocker and the Rhino, who make their first appearances in the cartoon, to go steal the Promethean X. At first, it's just Rhino, and then he comes on board to the shuttle, and Spider-Man fights him, and Rhino kind of kicks the crap out of him, throws him in the ocean. Uh, but when they, in their battle, they you know, drop the Promethean X and the ooze comes off of it. And when Spider-Man gets thrown into the ocean, it falls in with him and kind of attaches to him. And Spider-Man thinks at first that it's sludge. He's coming out, it's soaking wet. And he's like, oh, the Hudson River, gross. And uh, and he just dismisses it as just being like, you know, sludge on him and stuff. And, uh, and then that's when Rhino actually succeeds in his mission, beat up Spider-Man, got away, and takes the Promethean X back to uh, the Kingpin. Kingpin is using Promethean X trying to um, weaponize it and he's willing to sell it on the black market and just like a little sliver of it could actually blow up like an entire city. So he's willing to you know, chop it up into little fragments 
and sell you know each little chip to you know any bidder around the world um whether they're ally of america or not he was willing or even just you know anyone he was just willing to sell these weapons and, and use them against uh let them be used against whoever they wanted as long as he got rich and uh and so it just shows you how you know crazed uh in a way and then how much how little he cared about people and how much he cared about money and wealth that the kingpin was and that's actually something that plays back in later when they end the show where they introduce spider carnage and all that stuff but you know we'll get there we'll get there on the show eventually so after the whole ordeal with rhino spider-man goes back home he throws the costume like in his laundry and he's like all right it's covered in you know filth from the hudson i will wash it and deal with it tomorrow i need to go to bed i got my butt kicked and i'm tired so he passes out uh then he wakes up in the middle of the night hanging upside down uh looking at himself in a, a piece of glass like he's he's outside of a window of a skyscraper and he can see his reflection and he's covered completely in black and that's kind of similar what the live action movie did too which we will definitely talk about that version of venom down the road as well uh but this version had uh peter you know go oh whoa, whoa what's this like how'd i end up here and where'd you come from and he starts swinging around the city the webbing instead of coming out of here like with his gauntlet you know his little gadgets his web slingers um they actually start coming out here like the suit is producing them in a way and replicating kind of what he does um and he's just swinging around he's going really fast he uh, at this point he's wanted because J. John jameson saw that his you know he goes to get his son uh, in the hospital after the crash and his son just mumbles spider-man over and over and then they know the promethean x is missing so J. Jonah jameson of course puts his spin on it without knowing all the facts and says that uh that he you know that spider-man stole the promethean x and eddie brock was there and he was there taking pictures and he tells jonah hey look i got some pictures and of course he omits the pictures that had rhino in it and stuff and he was like look I i'm gonna like we have spider-man we have him dead to rights like this is him stealing the Promethean X, which all really he had was pictures of Spider-Man around the shuttle, uh, nothing concrete. And because J. Jonah Jameson wanted to believe that, he was like, okay, I'll buy these pictures. You're hired back. I know I fired you, but you're hired back. And he's and Eddie Brock's like, yes, all right, we can finally take down Spider-Man. Uh, and then, so this time, Eddie's setting himself up for failure. Before, he was actually telling the truth and he was a good journalist. Now he's, you know, so desperate and and, and so angry that it's he's setting him up, himself up for failure. And so, uh, so Spider-Man, you know, has a new black costume. He fights the the Rhino and beats him this time. Uh, he finds out that he's stronger. He used to have, he says, he used to have trouble lifting a Volkswagen. Now he's lifting up like a fire truck um, as he's testing the limits of his power. The suit changes, makes him look like a police officer, so he's able to hide when he's being chased by the police, and he's able to blend in and like get away. And uh, and then he's also like developing a backbone. He goes and and kind of starts a fight with Flash Thompson, his high school bully, who now they go to college together and in front of felicia hardy who later becomes black cat so it's cool that they had her in there too as flash's girlfriend because that was something from the comics and F felicia was also there in the early venom stories as well in amazing spider-man so all these things were just done really really well paced really well uh just very well executed in my opinion so with that backbone spider-man starts to notice other things are changing he's getting more aggressive he's getting more angry people start pointing this out to him felicia points it out to him aunt may points it out to him he's acting very different he's not his usual likable self he's definitely on edge he's moody he's he's willing to uh, push the boundaries uh, a lot and that's not peter parker you know he's he's a guy who doesn't make a lot of waves he's a guy who just wants to get by um, and he just wants to get through the day. And this this new Peter Parker is now acting very aggressive. And uh, and then he chases, what he does is he's like, all right, I'm gonna track down Rhino. He follows him to Kingpin's lair, goes in there, beats the crap out of him and Smythe, gets away from Kingpin, grabs a Promethean X and goes home and starts to study it. He's like, what do these guys want with it? And he's like, oh, wow, it, it explodes. It could be used as a weapon. Uh, and so he's like, all right, well, let's study it more. And he goes, oh, wait, look at this. How about that? And then that's when he hears that John Jameson is kidnapped from the hospital. But before he's kidnapped, he mentions to his father, J. John Jameson, that, uh, that Spider-Man was there to uh, help and that there was a guy in a rhino costume and that there there uh, the Promethean X was stolen by the guy in the rhino suit so now J. Jonah Jameson has the facts and he runs a retraction fires Eddie and says look you're done like you know you you told me you like the pictures were of Spider-Man stealing it you didn't tell me anything about the rhino guy and he's like yeah but this is what you wanted man he's like no he's like I wanted to tell the truth and he goes I hate Spider-Man but I hate like you know yellow journalism even more so uh and I hate being manipulated so you're out of here you're fired for good this time so with Eddie losing everything he's just really desperate now he really just wants to 
prove that Spider-Man's a bad person. So he starts, you know, trying to tail him, try to follow Peter Parker. He's doing whatever he can to to get, uh, you know, his his uh, his proof that he needs to get his life back. And uh, and that's where uh, Spider-Man now with the Promethean X learns something new about it. And then also J. Jonah Jameson, his son John, was kidnapped by the Kingpin. They contact Spider-Man and say, look, we'll trade you. Um, and they contact J. Jonah Jameson. So he says, look, will you help me save my son? I know I hate you. I know I say a lot of bad things about you, but I need your help right now. My son is a good man. He doesn't hate you. He's a good person. He, you know, he, he's a, you know, an astronaut uh, for our country. Like, he's a, good, he's a good man. Please, like, help me save him. And Spider-Man's like, with the black costume, kind of like, oh, I, I hate you so much, but all right, I'll do it. And he goes and he uh, pretty much deduced that it was going to be a trap, which it was. But Spider-Man had the edge anyway, because what happens is he learned that the Promethean X, after a, a couple days on Earth and our atmosphere, it's useless. It doesn't even, it won't explode anymore. So he's like, yeah, here's your rock. And they're like, okay, that was easy. And then he takes John, uh, John Jameson. He tells Jay Jonah, he's like, get your son out of here, go. And then the shocker comes out. He's ready to kill Spider-Man. But unfortunately for him, Spider-Man's also ready to kill. And they're fighting in this old church, this old abandoned church, where Eddie Brock has tracked them down. He's followed J. Jonah Jameson and uh, and Spider-Man and, and saw like this whole thing going down. He's taking pictures. He's trying to get the proof he needs that Spider-Man isn't a good person. He sees uh, Spider-Man willing to kill the Shocker. And he's like, all right, maybe this is the moment. And, uh, and as he's, you know, Spider-Man's holding the Shocker over the edge up near the bell tower or up on the bell tower, holding Shocker over the edge. Uh, he's like, I can't do it. I, he's like, I almost killed Rhino, and now I'm about to kill Shocker. I can't do it. And that's when the suit comes to life and hits the Shocker and knocks him off to kill him. But luckily, right at the last second, Spider-Man's able to save him with some webbing and then turns around and uh, and is like, I got to get rid of this suit. He's like, what are its weaknesses? He's like, I'm not I'm not near fire. You know, I, I got to get rid of it. And then it's the stroke of midnight and the bells go off and the suit starts to get agitated. And he's like, oh, sonic sounds. He's like, I remember that from earlier when like the cops and stuff were chasing us. Some of them had like high tech weaponry to try to take us down. And one of them was like a sonic gun. So uh, he's like, that's one of your weaknesses. So Spider-Man uh, goes over to the bell and the sound of the bell, you know, rips the symbiote off of him and he's able to fight it off and get away. And then it takes one last lash at Spider-Man, but he, or Peter Parker, but Peter like dodges it, jumps over to the edge of the, the bell tower and is hanging on. And he looks up and the suit disappears into the ground. And, like there's a crack in the ground underneath the bell. And he's like, it's gone. It's finished. Like finally this thing that was going to make me kill, that was going to, you know, it was turning me against all my friends and family it's finally gone like that's great and he has to basically now get home in his boxer shorts because that's all he has left on without that suit on him um and then unbeknownst to him though inside the church eddie brock had been tied up um you know as he was trying to like get proof of all this and spider-man got mad at him webbed him up in the corner and was like no you're staying here bud and he's like and i'll come back and finish you after i finish the shocker and uh, and as he's down there he's just perfect uh a uh, perfect new host for the uh, venom symbiote so it drips down uh, from the bell the bell stop and it's able to reform and wrap around eddie brock and create spider-man's villain venom the final episode of this trilogy starts off with venom working out eddie brock's pump and weight he's in his old apartment it's still he's still evicted from it but he broke in He's lifting weights and he's just sitting there remembering all the moments from the season where he was lied to, where he was trying to expose Kirk Connors and that turned on him, when he was trying to expose Spider-Man and that turned on him, and he just keeps blaming and hating Spider-Man for every bad thing that's happened to him, even though after the maybe the first thing you could argue, yeah, that was, you know, Spider didn't mean to do it, but it happened and, and it's, it's probably you know you could kind of see eddie's side on that but then everything after that was just eddie desperate and angry and just ruining the rest of his life he could have bounced back maybe but he just kept digging that hole that uh, that was being dug for him he just like hey i'll take the shovel i'll finish it so he goes into full vin uh, villain mode in this one and the final like episode is spider-man back in his red and blue he's going around trying to make amends to all the people that he you know uh, crossed and then he sees rhino uh, on a roof just kind of waiting for him so he goes and starts a fight with him shocker shows up and the two of them are like like, look we're getting our revenge against you like you know uh you embarrassed us you were hitmen we've done a lot of you know su successful jobs um all over the world and and in the city 
and we've never had a run-in with you and we've never been embarrassed like this so we're gonna come at you strong and then we also are here because of Kingpin and Smythe and they know that uh, that you tricked us with the Promethean X they knew like they figured out that you knew it wasn't gonna work anymore so we're here to get our revenge for all four of us like you embarrassed all four of us and Spider-Man's like yeah okay good luck with that so he's like you know fighting them webbing them up and then they actually get the upper hand but before they can finish him Venom shows up and mops the floor with them and he's like no Spider-Man is ours, and uh, and Eddie shows up, and he there's this really creepy moment where Peter's like like he's or Spider-Man in the costume, obviously he's like digging himself out of this rubble, and he looks up, and Eddie Brock standing there, and he goes Eddie Brock, and he goes Hey Parker, and then he's like What did you say to me? And he goes and he goes he goes Hey, how'd you get up here? And he goes Same way you did, and then he just turns into Venom and like just starts terrorizing Spider-Man, and within like this 22 minute episode, they do they hit all the notes like he's terrorizing Spider-Man here. He's messing with them. He's going to visit Aunt May. He goes and torments Mary Jane. Uh, and she actually stands up to him. She's like, hey, I know Peter Parker's not a friend of yours. And she and he's like, he's like, yeah, okay. And then he's like, you know, walks away. But he's terrorizing everyone uh, in Peter's life and, and getting back at him and driving him insane. And finally, you know, Spider-Man gets really, really desperate. And he's like, all right, I'm going to just attack him. He does. It doesn't go his way. He gets his butt kicked. And then he's like, all right, well, I can't, like, I, you know, he tracked down where Eddie lived. He found out, like, where some workout equipment was being shipped to. He went to, like, fight him there and, and basically string him along. He's like, all right, I got a plan. After I got my butt kicked, I learned my lesson. I got to be smarter than him. So what can I do to, like, you know, fight back on this thing? I got to get the symbiote off of Brock because then after that, he won't really be a major threat anymore um, and so what he does is he finds out there's another space shuttle launch that's happening um, in honor of John Jameson for his you know his bravery and his survival and, and landing the shuttle so they're sending off like some I think it's like a probe thing I don't think it's a manned mission uh, but they're gonna send something up um, to like you know I don't know whatever it's gonna be and uh, and so spider-man goes and leads venom to that and then they get in a fight and they're fighting right next to this big space shuttle and then the, the, the shuttle's about to take off, and the sound and the flames coming out from under the shuttle start to irritate the symbiote. Spider-Man rips it off Eddie, throws it on the shuttle, webs it to the shuttle, and then grabs Eddie and jumps away, swings away, just as the shuttle takes off um, and, and saves the day and gets rid of the symbiote, he thinks, once and for all. But as we know, you know, it's Venom. He's going to come back for sure, and he might even bring a red friend with him. So we'll talk about those uh, those two episodes. I think it was um, Sins of the Father, and it's like two parts in that storyline. Because it like what they started doing in season two and three and onward of Spider-Man, of the Amazing Spider-Man cartoon, was that they would uh, do season-long storylines. So you would have like Madam Web preparing Spider-Man for like something, like this big thing that's going to come. And he would cross some paths with like Blade the Vampire Hunter and Morbius the Living Vampire. Um, and then he would meet like Iron Man and War Machine. So it was really, it was really cool actually. And we'll talk about some of those characters I just mentioned in the next episode we talk, where we talk about the animated series again. Because it'll be Venom, Carnage, War Machine, Iron Man, uh, Baron Mordo from Doctor Strange, and Dormammu. Uh, all are in one storyline, in one two-episode storyline. How crazy is that? Um, but the show pulled it off really well, just like it pulled these three episodes off. So you can see there's some similarities, some differences um, from the comic book version we talked about in Birth of Venom and Vengeance of Venom but also all the key notes were hit by these people that made this show. And yeah, if you are out there, check these out. I think they're on Amazon Video. Like I, that's where I own them. I bought them on Kindle. They were like, I had like a $7 movie credit um, from Amazon that I got randomly and I used it to buy each episode. So it was like three episodes, $2 each. It was totally worth it. I was like, hey, all right, I got the, the whole Venom arc for free. Uh, but we'll definitely pick up like future storylines from the animated series because I like talking about that to compare it to the the comic book but then also see like you know what they'll they might pull from this and put into the movie uh, obviously they can't pull any of the spider-man stuff or they're not gonna but it's be interesting to see what they pull from eddie brock's life uh, and how he was portrayed in this animated show so if you have any theories about that let me know down in the comments below as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff thank you for supporting the show i appreciate it very much i'll see you all in the future peace